Let's talk MIDI. M-I-D-I. MIDI is really the heart of our time here in Studio One and what we're going to use to create all of our songs, all of our beats, everything. So it's important we have a good understanding of what it is and how it works. Now MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's a way to connect to the computer or a synthesizer to, by sending messages to it to tell it what to do. So let me explain that a little bit more. MIDI doesn't actually ha make any sound itself. MIDI is just messages. So for instance, if I wanted you to pick up a red ball, I would say, pick up the red ball, and you would do it. That's a message I'm sending you. When I hit a key on my keyboard, the keyboard is not actually making any sound, but this G key down here, when I click it, it's sending a message to Studio One that tells Mai Tai to play the G note, and then Mai Tai does that. So MIDI is really a string of messages that is just telling the computer what to do. And you can control those messages from your MIDI keyboard, from your QWERTY keyboard like this. And however you input them, it's just important to understand that the MIDI messages themselves don't make sound. It's the instrument, the virtual instrument makes the sound. And the virtual instrument is controlled by the MIDI messages. So the virtual instrument doesn't care where the MIDI messages come from, it just needs them to be able to operate. So we can input them in a variety of ways, but the most common is through your MIDI keyboard or your QWERTY keyboard, like this. This controls it in just the same way. Right now, it's changing my computer keyboard into a MIDI controller, and then these keys are sending MIDI messages to my tie and telling it what to do. Just the same as when I do it on my real keyboard here. So it doesn't matter if you have a real MIDI keyboard, you can use this one and it works just the same. Now some of the benefits of using MIDI is that once we record it, we can go in and change it later because we're not actually recording any audio, we're just recording the messages. So none of the sound is getting recorded, just the messages get recorded. So we can go in and edit the messages after we record them and then we can change um, what our performance was, change the notes we played, change how long the notes were, and we're going to look at how to do that very shortly. So that's kind of like the main advantage of MIDI is that it's super flexible. We can write an entire song and if we didn't like some of the notes we played, we can go back and just change them. Where if we recorded the audio like of our guitar or our real piano or our voice, of course you can't go back in and just change what you did. It's recorded. It's just, it is as it is. There is some techniques you can use to change it a little bit, but not like with MIDI. With MIDI, you can go in and completely change your performance after you've already recorded it. And that's the most important aspect of MIDI. So some of the most primary messages of MIDI in terms of what it's telling the computer is the note on message. So if I open up my MIDI monitor here and I hit a key, note on C3. So it says, here's the message number, here's the time I hit it at, and it's telling, telling the computer uh, a note on message for C3, and when I let go, note off. So here we go again. This is telling the computer, play note C3, and as soon as I let go, stop playing note C3. This is how MIDI works. It just sends messages. This is, these are literally the messages that my tie is receiving right now. So the other important message that it sends is velocity. And velocity is basically how hard you hit the key. So if I play softly and get louder, notice how much the sound changes. So velocity is how hard you hit the key. It's a really important feature. Now, not every synth responds to velocity. Some synths just stay the same when you hit the velocity hard or soft, and that's totally fine because they don't need to. But other things like the piano and this one I'm playing right now have an important aspect through velocity where, with the, if I go to the piano, if I hit it soft, it's quiet. So it feels like a real piano. With mojito, that soft, that's hard sounds exactly the same. That's because this patch is not programmed 
to respond to velocity. So sometimes velocity is used and sometimes it isn't. Those are the main messages, the note on, the note off, and velocity. That tells you what notes you hit, how hard you hit it, and then when you let go of it. Those messages are getting sent to your instrument and then your instrument is playing the sound according to the message. Now there is a couple other uh, important messages to know about we'll talk about quickly. One is the mod wheel. So that's a wheel I have on my keyboard my MIDI keyboard, and if I play this note and turn up the wheel, you can watch it right here, this uh, representation of it. So you can see it changes the sound. Now that's also available on our QWERTY keyboard, like this, but we have to manually uh, move it, like this. But it does the same thing. So with the real keyboard, I can play with this in real time. But with the QWERTY keyboard, I would have to record it after I've recorded my notes. I'd play my notes, then I'd do another pass of recording and move this the way I want it to move. The other thing is the pitch bend wheel. And the pitch bend wheel just makes the pitch go up and down. And again, we have the same thing here. So these two wheels don't come on every MIDI keyboard, but there is some way to control it on every keyboard. And if you don't have a way to control it, you can always control it here. And there's another way to do it that we're going to learn about in the future where you can just actually draw in the changes you want to make with a little paint tool. Now, the last thing I want to mention is the differences between the physical keyboard I'm using and the QWERTY keyboard. The QWERTY keyboard only has one octave. If we look at the notes here, this is C, right? We have the two black keys. When we go to the left, that's C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, E has no sharp, E straight to F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and C again. Now my real keyboard has a huge range, many, many octaves. Now, what if you want to get more octaves with the QWERTY keyboard? Well, luckily you have an octave selector right here. So I can either just click these arrows, or I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it around like that. So you can only ever play one octave at a time, but you can choose what that octave is by using this. The other difference is velocity. A real MIDI keyboard will have the ability to play different velocities just by hitting the keys harder. So here's a soft hit, harder. like that. Whereas if I hit my computer keyboard, it doesn't matter how hard I hit the key, and I probably actually don't want to hit it very hard because it might wreck the keyboard, it doesn't make any difference. So with the QWERTY keyboard, we have to choose the velocity ourselves, and we do that with this little slider down here. Now the great thing is, because it's MIDI, once we've recorded our part that we want, we can go in and change the velocity of every note after we record it. We don't really have to worry about this too much. This just determines what is the velocity it's going to play at right now. But after we record it, we can go change the velocity to be whatever we want. And then as I mentioned before, the last difference really is these wheels. So I have physical wheels on my keyboard, which makes me easy to play with. I can use one hand on the wheel, one hand on the key, but here, you kind of have to play with your fingers here and then move the wheels afterwards. So that's a little bit of a disadvantage of using the QWERTY keyboard, but it's not huge. It's definitely still doable. Beyond that, they function the same way. This sends messages to um, your synth. So does my real keyboard. They're identical other than this is one octave and it doesn't have velocity. You have to change the octave with these buttons and the wheels, of course, aren't physical, so you can't just touch them. So as I said before, I do recommend having a physical MIDI keyboard, but if that's not an option for you right now, this will absolutely do the trick, nothing to worry about. So that's it for the basics of MIDI and understanding it. I'll see you in the next video.